people will ask, okay, how do I know? And I've seen reactions with the first dose. I've seen it take 10 to 12 weeks in a real sick person. So if you react with the first dose, we may only have to treat you for three, four, six weeks, something like that. And then we go backwards and get back on biocidin and all the goodies, right? You're thinking of going downhill. If you don't react for eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 weeks, and then it starts happening, you had other layers of junk that we had to get rid of. That's a person I've had to treat on the other hemisphere for a year or two, and then they unwound. Like those are super sick folks. A lot of people on biologic drugs, because they'll disrupt the native immunity, you know, in an effort to keep you from flaring up your Crohn's or colitis or whatever, they just develop a real insensitivity to treatment. So sometimes they take longer. But in general, I guess my caution would be if you do something like a biz style or whatever for two, four, six weeks, and then things are chilling out, and then you're back to some biocide, and then you're working, that's fine. If you need more than that, you really need to work with somebody who can manage it because you may have other issues going on. So the prescription, well, the original one, they, they called it Biosolve PA, which was my initials. Now you take the recipe from that handout. And there's two versions based on what the pharmacy has. Any compounding pharmacy can make both of those easily. There's not a name for it. So if you take it to a compounding pharmacy, they will still need a some provider to sign off on it, but the recipe is there. It tells them how much of each thing to put together in the mixer and some provider will have to order it, but it's, I made it, it's plug and play. The two versions are there. The pharmacy, you know, will know how to make it, but it's a compounding pharmacy thing. The drug versions, I I haven't kept in close touch with my friends in that industry, but I know that they're out there, but they're kind of reserved for hospital use or military use. So those are not things that your average doctor can even order. Not that this is common. Every now and then I find somebody kind of in the Western medical model, a gastroenterologist or somebody, and they're frustrated too. And that's how I've become friends with some of them is they read about the biofilm thing and then they want to know from me, well, how, how do you use this without arming yeah. the patient and all that? The way I usually look at it with most of the labs is everybody has the right to be mold exposed or have some other thing. But when we get people where their their organic acid tests are really unusual, maybe there's a lot of like aspergillus and other fungal things and whatever, and they're sequestering mycotoxins and, you know, they can't seem to get rid of their CMV or EBV or some fungus or whatever. That's more just inferential evidence that says part of this picture is a biofilm that is is not letting you really treat the problem. And then there's other parts too. So it's more inferential. Yeah, it would be really great if we had like a magic wand thing. But the other thing I will say that even before all this, when we would have people who had the history of, well, I did good GI, you know, so there's the dumb GI testing, but I did good GI testing and nothing showed up and they have all this GI stuff. We put people on two weeks Normally, NAC and acetylcysteine, give them a gram twice a day for two weeks, then they stop, and then they collect their stool. And in the majority of cases where there's symptoms but clean labs, the labs are no longer clean. It stuff comes out. That's an easy tell. If you have a history of spending, because none of those tests are cheap, spending good yeah. money on a lab and it doesn't match your tummy symptoms to do some biofilm that's prep, that's more of a direct marker. It's more, I've rarely met a chronically ill person who doesn't have some level of biofilm problem that's a piece of the puzzle to work with. And in cancer survivorship, so congratulations, um, secondary prevention, which probably both the books you read are over my shoulder here. We talk about secondary prevention from different points of view there. In secondary prevention, when I'm trying to keep somebody not having cancer come back or keep it in remission, whatever, looking at cleaning their gut up but getting it working again, biofilms are almost always a part of that. Because what you did to get in cancer remission, even if it was all natural, but especially if it was partly Western and or whatever, all those things make biofilms just have a sort of a heyday in your GI tract. It's just the way it is. But thank God, you know, if you can go into remission, have NED or stable disease or something, then you have the time to work on all that stuff. You know, re rehab yeah. your endocrine system, rehab your gut, work on the biofilms, all that.